Hello everyone, thanks for watching and joining. This is the Jared Roberts vlog once again. And uh, I think we're ready to get started here. So let's uh, get started. Okay. <coughs> Um, let's see, what's today? Today is Tuesday, March 6th, 2012. Um, yeah, today was an alright day. Um, oh yeah, that was alright. Anyways, um, and God says, This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. So, yeah, God says, Every day is a good day. Every day is a great day. But anyways, um, continuing on. Let's see, what else? Um, sorry, I'm like itching here because it's winter and it's cold out and it makes my dry skin, makes my skin dry, <laughs> makes my dry skin. Oh my. Anyways, um, yeah. So I was just thinking today, like, um, you know, like. There's, um, there's, like, actually, give me one second, I'll be right back. Okay, sorry about that. Okay. Like, I was just thinking today, like, about God and stuff, and, like, he's just so amazing and so awesome. I could go on about that, but I think I'm going to try and refrain from doing that and just go on a different aspect, talk about a different aspect. Like, God... You know, like, if only we knew how much patience God has, like, he, or if only, if only we knew how patient God is with us, I think that would change the world. Like, he is so patient time and time again. He's patient with us and always there with open arms, always completely and totally unconditional love. Like, he has complete and total, true, unconditional love for us. And he's always patient with us, and he has so much grace and mercy, f you know, for us and stuff. Like, like it's crazy. Like, we we should just be speechless and not grumble or complain about anything. But I, I I'll fully admit, for me, that's hard. Um, I I hope to someday get to a point that point or almost there you know well I shouldn't say almost there I want to be there I do want to be there I, I want to get to a point where like I, I don't complain about anything and it, and I'm just you know I want to be you know I want to try I want to try my best to be like God like Jesus and and I wish I knew exactly what that means. It says, it says when we accept God into our hearts, that we have, like, we get a new, um, I don't know, I forget exactly what it says, but I think it says something like we get, we get a new mind, or our mind is renewed when we accept God into our hearts, our mind is renewed, and we don't, we don't, do different things, we don't do things the same way we used to and stuff, but like, why does it still seem so hard, if that's the case, why does it still seem so hard to, um, not sin, and different things, and why does it still seem so hard to, to not do what God wants us to do, or to do, why does it still seem so hard to do what God wants us to do and stuff. I don't know. Anyways, I guess that's the way God wanted it. He didn't want to answer all of our questions straightforward. He wanted us to think about it and and lean on Him and trust Him. I guess that's what it's all about. It's just loving everybody because it says love your neighbor as yourself. That's like the first or second commandment. I think it's the second one. The first one I think is love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength or something like that and then the second one is love your neighbor as yourself so basically we're supposed to love everyone as God loves us oh that's the other thing I was going to bring up too is um, you you all 
wanting to check out the defi- the true definition of love, which I believe is 1 Corinthians 13. Um, that is the true definition of love, and we all should do, strive to um, love everyone in that way. Um, it's part of it is, or the majority of it is, is um, the definition of the, the most of the definition of love consists of love is patient, love is kind, does not envy, does not is not proud, is not boastful. Um, Love is patient, love is kind, does not envy, something like that. That's that's the majority, or, or at least half of it, I think. But there's a lot more to it. You should check it out. And, like, I'm trying, you know, I keep trying to do that. It's not always easy, but I at least try to try to do that. So, um, you know, I, everybody watching this, I would challenge you to try and do that. And I think if we do that, ultimately, um, you know, by if we do the true definition of love and we are called to love everyone, including our worst, like, think about this. God says, love your neighbor as yourself. So he's calling us to love everyone. And that includes your worst enemy, the person that you absolutely hate, like the worst possible person on the face of the earth. Basically, the... He's asking us to love everyone, including the worst pos- the worst person on the face of the earth. I mean, like Hitler. He's calling us to love people like Hitler and, you know, everyone. Just your worst enemy, the person that you hate, you know, that you, you might say now that you hate with a passion, but you shouldn't say that, and you should love them as God would love them. Um, you know, that's what we're commanded to do, and, like, all of your enemies, like, I'm sure you have probably more than one enemy, or person that you hate, more than one person you hate, we're supposed to love everyone. If we just did that, the world would be an amazing place, and it would, oh my goodness, it would be, it would change the world. Um, and, um... What was it? I was talking with my girlfriend about something this past weekend, and I, it was just like I was trying to prove something because God asked us. I don't know. Basically, yeah, like there's something in the Bible that God doesn't straight up ask us to do, like straightforward. But if we would just love, he asks us to love everyone. And if we would just do that with the true definition of love, which is love is patient, love is kind, does not envy, does not boast, does, is not prideful. If we would do all of that, it's pretty much the same thing as what I was talking about with my girlfriend. I wish I could recall it, but I can't right now. But um, anyways, so, um, yeah. Just, um, oh, negativity. Like, that's what it was. And po- being positive. Like, the Bible, God doesn't straightforward call us, He doesn't straight up say or command us to be positive. But, um, He, if we would just, if we would do His command, which is to love Him, love God. With all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love our neighbor as ourself, and the definition of love is, you know, part of the definition of love is love is patient, love is kind, does not envy, does not boast, is not prideful. Um, if we would do all of that, it's pretty much the same thing as being positive, you know, being a positive person, being positive most of the time. And plus it says, it also says to pray constantly, or pray without ceasing. I think it says to pray without ceasing. Now, I believe, I realize this is like, I realize that to pray without ceasing is kind of impossible. Um, But he's still trying to get across, um, I think God's still trying to get across a point with that command. 
that um, he's still trying to get across the point that um, we are supposed to talk to God often, pray to God often, have a relationship, like a two-way communication relationship with God, um, and it's supposed to be pretty consistent. Like, it's not like, oh, we just pray to God when we eat our food, and we just pray to God at church, and when we, when we have hard times, or when other people are, when our friends are having hard times. No. We're supposed to pray to God often, talk to God often. And, I mean, I've done it in the past. I used to do it more than I do it now. Unfortunately, I need to get back to that point of praying, like, really often. Like, I, I used to, like I said, I used to do it. And what, you know, like, praying doesn't mean, it doesn't say, in order to pray, you have to close your eyes. Or in order to pray, you have to stop doing all that you're doing. Or in order to pray, you have to get quiet. You know, it doesn't say any of that. I mean, yeah, that stuff might be good and it might help you to pray. I agree, but at the same time, it says to pray without ceasing. And so how do you do that? Well, that the way to do that is you pray all the time. Like, you, whatever you're doing, you're praying. You're talking to God, you know. Um, in, with your mind and, and, and talking silently or under your breath or you can even pray out loud too just walking down the street and stuff I mean who cares what people who cares what other people think if you're praying to God and talking to God out loud walking down the street like who cares what other people think that's part of being that's part of humility and being humble and stuff um and something else let me Give me one second. Um, that's like I'm trying to see here. I thought I had something on that. Alright, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I should stop running away from the video. But uh, anyways, um, I thought I had something more on that. But like, it's just part of like dying to yourself because. To be a Christian, I think in order to be a Christian, you, you have to die to yourself um, cause, and not be selfish. And that's what it is. That's part of what it is. It's, you, but in order to die to yourself, you have to be unselfish. Not, you have to not be selfish and put others before yourself. So, <clears throat> um, and that's what you should do as a Christian and a believer in God. But, um, yeah, just, you, um, you just gotta be humble and just, and like, pray, pray without ceasing. How do you do that? Well, like, you, like I said, you just, everywhere you go, you're always praying to God. Uh, like, uh, you know, I would, when I used to do it often, I would just be walking down the street or whatever, talking to God, praying to God, like, you know, and that's part, that's another way, like, part of the reason why I did that, I guess, too, was because, like, sometimes I would think of a prayer that needed, that I needed to pray, or something that, you know, somebody needed help, like, a friend would need help. Now, I realize I said that it's not good to only do that, and it's not good to only pray to God at that time, but, um, anyways, the point is, as soon as I would think of something to pray, I would just pray. As soon as I would find out that somebody needs prayer, or is hurting, or whatever it was, I would pray. So then I wouldn't have to worry, like, oh, I'm going to forget it, and I have to write it on a post-it note. No, I wouldn't have to do any of that, because I just prayed it, right then and there. You know, just take a moment and pray. Like, talk to God. And, you know, like, you'd be amazed at how... When you start when you start doing this pretty regularly, you'd be amazed at what how much God talks to you and stuff. I really need to get back to that point. It's so good because God talks to you so much. You get so much from God. You don't and you. My problem is is I guess I tend to take that for granted and I'm like, okay, thanks God. Like or I don't even hardly thank God for what He told me. You know. Or, and stuff, and I'm just not, I just take it for granted, but seriously, he does, like, you'd be amazed, like, he, 
he just comes through in amazing ways. Like, I, like I'll be like, God, like, and just be real with God. Stop trying to only tell God about this and only, like, God wants to know everything. God wants you, even though God already knows everything, it clearly says in the Bible, he still wants to hear from you. He still wants you to talk to him because it's a two-way communication which is a real, that's a real relationship. A, you know, a fake or an non-existent relationship is a one-way communication, you know. But this is a two-way communication. You talk to God and you hear from God and stuff. Now, when you first start, you might not hear from God. That's fine. Just keep doing it and you'll, you'll and, and there's, you know, there's many ways to, like, just seek out, ask. You can post questions online, like, how can I hear from God better? You can do searches online. You can get books that tell you how to hear better from God. But just, I would just say, just practice it. Keep praying to God and talking to God. And be real with God. Like, be really real. Like, don't sugarcoat stuff. Don't try and whatever. Just be like, you know, tell God what you're dealing with and what's going on. And just be like, God, I'm just crying out to you right now and just you know, whatever, like, if you're being, if you're sad, like, just be like, God, I'm really sad right now, or I'm depressed, or I need, I need this, I need that, what do I do about this, what do I do about that, um, just, you know, be real with God, <clears throat> um, also, like, you know, like, God, what do I do about this, like, I'm really wondering about this, what do I do about this, or that, you know, just ask God, pray to God, and, you know, help, will answer you like expect an answer if you don't expect an answer from God you're not going to get one see <clears throat> I would challenge you to expect an answer and when you pray for people to be healed as a side note when you pray for people to be healed expect God to heal them if you don't expect him to heal you heal that person he's not going to heal and maybe you can do that for yourself if you're asking God to heal you expect him to heal you don't you know, don't kind of like, whatever. Just expect him to heal you. Stir up that faith, you know. It only takes a mustard seed to move a mountain. But you got to get to that point where you have a mustard seed of faith in order to move a mountain. If you don't have that mustard seed of faith, you aren't going to move that mountain. So you got to get to that point. Like, why would God... It says God gives us a portion of faith or... Uh, Something like, God gives us a portion of faith, or a, 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 yeah, portion of faith. Well, if God gives us a portion of faith, but at the same time, there's another verse that says, you're, if you have a mustard seed of faith, you can move a mountain. Why would he say there's two things? Like, or why would he say you have a mustard, if you, if you have a mustard seed of faith, you can move a mountain. Why would he say that if he already gives you a portion? I believe it's because you have to still, you, even though he gives you a portion of faith, you still have to work up that faith and, and build that faith up to that mustard seed to, in order to move the mountain. Okay. And now, I what I believe also, um, whenever he talks about a, moving a mountain, having faith to move a mountain, I think he's also saying uh, that can be like two twofold or two types of mountains it could be <clears throat> it could be a physical mountain it could be a spiritual mountain it could be a emotional mountain like anything that's a giant or a mountain in your life like um or you know like or an attack or the devil or whatever anything it can be anything um, or it could be an actual mountain, or like something big, and a, a big physical object. <coughs> so, that's just um, my whole take on that. Um, so yeah, I just would like to challenge you guys just to do, do all that. Stir up your faith, and, and challenge you to love with a true love. And, and put others before yourself. Stop being selfish, and put others before your, uh, yourself, so... Alright, I think I'm done for now. Um, oh, one quick note. I did come up with a temporary solution for the EDJ. Um, I downloaded everything I needed to download to clear up the space I need. I'm pretty good to go with my Ustream account now. I'm keeping, 
enough space free, um, and I am, um, I think what I'm gonna do is each show that I do, I'm gonna use Ustream to record it, and then, and then each day that I do a show, I'm also gonna download, I'm gonna try to download, like, the oldest episode and delete that, uh, download it to my computer and delete off the Ustream account to keep that, like, to keep around a gig free, maybe like one gig free on Ustream, you know, so that I don't go over my limit. And, um, so that's for the EDJ radio show that I do every Monday night and Friday night. Um, and so that's what I'm going to do. I still haven't figured out how to permanently have the URL website up on, uh, perm on there permanently, but, uh, whatever. It, everything's a process, so. Um... Yeah, I think that's about it. That's what I'm going to do for now. And eventually, you know, hopefully soon I'm going to get a, an actual website, like a professional website for the Ed Raider Show. And I'll post, I hope to post the all of my videos, all of the videos up there. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's the plan. All right, thanks for watching. Please subscribe and like my videos. And um, we'll catch you on the next video, vlog. Thanks. Bless you.